This summer, we have been looking at stories and events from Jesus' life, according to the book of Luke. I was curious to look at stories rather than just the teachings of Jesus or his parables. What, what happened in Jesus' life? How did he experience being a human? How was his life like ours and also nothing like ours? So far, Jesus has been lost or forgotten at the temple, but found safe in his father's house. He has been tempted by the devil, but survived the wilderness because of God's steadfastness. Jesus has been run out of his hometown, and still he continued to preach good news to the poor. He provided a miraculous catch to Simon Peter and his friends, and called them to be disciples thereby offering spiritual and physical sustenance. He has offered healing, spoken God's word to many, and showed us new ways of doing things. Today we are looking at one of Jesus' run-ins with the Pharisees, a dispute that takes place on the Sabbath. Do you guys hear that? Is, it, is that better? We'll see. Today we are looking at one of Jesus' run-ins with the Pharisees, a dispute that takes place on the Sabbath, and about the Sabbath, no less. Is that better? Maybe? Yeah, better? Because I'm like feeling very... <laughs> Jesus and his disciples have been traveling around and telling any and all who would listen about God's kingdom. It's hard work. And Jesus has demonstrated through this work that he is a learned man and knowledgeable about the law. But they're tired and hungry. And so the disciples walked from town to town and they plucked grains of wheat from a field as they walked. The Pharisees are up in arms about this action, very angry. Why are you breaking the Sabbath law, they cry. How can this man who purports to be the Messiah be so flippant with regards to the law? Now, maybe it seems weird to us to get our shorts in a knot about hungry people feeding themselves. However, this word picked or plucked essentially means harvesting. The disciples were harvesting on the Sabbath. And harvesting is work which must not be done on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is for resting from all of our labors. Even servants and animals are to rest on the Sabbath. And as we saw in the children's story, rest is important to God. God rested, and so should we. That's what the law says. The Pharisees often get a bad rap, and they are indeed being very legalistic here. They're very serious about the rules. And they don't understand why Jesus would break the law. We do see many times in the Gospel accounts when Jesus retreats from the crowds to rest, and to pray. Jesus is not opposed to rest. He's not opposed to the law. As a rule follower myself, perhaps I would also have been puzzled by the action of the disciples in the words of Jesus. The purpose of the law is to keep people in right relationship with God. And that's still the function of rules and laws in our society today. Social etiquette, traffic laws, even building codes and municipal bylaws, these all exist to help us get along and keep us in good relations with each other. The breaking of rules and laws results in fractured relations in people and in society. I can maybe sympathize a bit with the Pharisees here. They're concerned. They do not understand Jesus' reasons for breaking the law. I also think generally that rules help society function, and I get uncomfortable when the rules are broken, especially if the breaking of the rules seems to serve no clear purpose or seems to benefit only one person rather than everybody. Jesus answers the Pharisees' questions with evidence from the Jewish scriptures about a time when breaking the law was acceptable. Jesus, after all, is a learned rabbi. If the Pharisees want to argue law and prophets, Jesus is game. And he relates a story about King David from 1 Samuel. David needs to feed his troops. So he goes to a priest because he's on a special mission, and he and his men are very hungry. He asks the priest for bread 
But the only bread available is the holy bread of the presence, essentially the Lord's bread. And the priest is unsure if this is the right thing to do. Should he give this bread to David? But David assures the priest that the men have been behaving themselves and they really are hungry. So the priest gives the holy bread to David to eat. Jesus tells this story because it means that the law in the Hebrew scriptures is open to his interpretation. And more importantly, the law is open to human need. Jesus, like David in the story from 1 Samuel, values and deeply reveres the law. But they both acknowledge that sometimes the needs of our neighbors are more important than that. This event from Jesus' ministry is another way that Jesus illustrates his two great commandments. Love God, but also love your neighbor. We cannot ignore human need. We cannot ignore loving our neighbor by hiding behind the law. Jesus ends this tale of David with the words, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. This is a big statement about Jesus, about who Jesus is, or who he claims to be, according to the Pharisees. The Gospel of Mark contains a very similar story about a Sabbath controversy. But Mark ends his story in a slightly different way. Mark makes the statement that, and you're probably familiar with this one, the Sabbath was created for humans. Humans weren't created for the Sabbath. Luke does not go that far, but merely ends this episode with this statement that Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Perhaps Luke was guarding against too many violations of the Sabbath by the Christians. If the Sabbath was made for humans, does that mean that we, humans, can do whatever we want? A Sabbath free-for-all would be quite disruptive. And I don't think that's what Jesus in Luke's gospel is saying. Perhaps Luke is a bit of a rule follower like me. A little change up is okay, but maybe not a full revolt against the Sabbath laws. What Luke is offering in this story is a high Christological view of Jesus. There is no mystery in Luke about who Jesus is. Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. In Mark's Gospel, for example, Jesus is always telling everyone to keep his secret. He heals people and then tells them not to tell anyone. Jesus is a bit mysterious. The author of Luke, however, is basically shouting from the rooftops that Jesus is the Messiah through the whole Gospel. We see this through Luke's lengthy birth narrative. This birth of this little baby is a big deal, and Luke wants to spend a lot of time telling us about it. However, his account of Jesus' baptism is very brief, shorter even than Mark's, and nothing is shorter than Mark's account of anything. It's almost as if Luke wants to brush over the baptism. Because if one is a very high view of Jesus' Christness, then why would he need to be baptized? Similarly, here in Luke's account, Jesus just says, The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. There are no qualifiers, as there are in Mark's Sabbath story. Mark's telling almost gives a reason for Jesus' lordship over the Sabbath. Mark says, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. As Dave discussed last Sunday, Son of Man basically means human. So Jesus is like the human. In fact, my Bible renders the statement of Mark's like this. The Sabbath was created for humans. Humans weren't created for the Sabbath. This is why the human one is Lord of the Sabbath. So it's like Mark is giving a reason for Jesus' statement. But Luke's gospel just states, the human one is Lord of the Sabbath. No qualifier. Jesus is Lord. Jesus' bold statement in Luke has real meaning and ramifications for the church. This means that Jesus Christ, his words and his actions determine the church's understanding of the Sabbath. The church is not bound by an old understanding of law, but nor can it disregard all that came before Jesus. We cannot be cavalier or disrespectful of Sabbath law, but rather we view it through Jesus. 
As Jesus illustrated with his story about David and the bread, Jesus views human need as paramount. Sacred rules and ritual mean little in the face of real human need. The Sabbath story that follows this account is the story of Jesus healing the man with a withered hand. Again on the Sabbath, and again the Pharisees are not happy. And again Jesus replies with the importance of saving life. Jesus says, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? To save a life or destroy it? The most important thing is not the law, but to do good. To save a life, one cannot rest in the face of human need. As a church, especially a Mennonite church, we look at scripture, we look at ourselves, and we look out at the world through the lens of Jesus. Jesus shows us the way. Jesus himself says he is Lord of the Sabbath. He is our Lord, not only of the Sabbath, but our Lord and Savior. We must turn to him. What Jesus demonstrates in these Sabbath stories is that we cannot hide behind sacred law and ritual or piety. The law exists to help us stay in right relationship with God. But how can we be in right relationship if we ignore the needs of our neighbors? As is stated many times in the Gospels, Jesus did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Jesus' goal is not to obliterate the Sabbath custom, but to fulfill it. And this word fulfill, it says a lot in a very short word. And the, the meaning of fulfill can be a variety of things, including bring to completion, achieve or realize, or carry out. And I love that last one, carry out. Jesus did not come to abolish the law, but to carry it out, to realize it, to carry out God's desire for relationship with his people and to bring to completion God's relationship with his people. As Jesus demonstrates in healing a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath, and as the disciples show by harvesting grain to feed themselves on the Sabbath, human need is very important. We cannot allow rules for holy living to blind us to the needs of those around us. Jesus is our Lord of the Sabbath and our Lord and Savior. These stories illustrate that Jesus does not want rules for holy living to blind us to the needs of our neighbors. We must act to do good rather than harm on the Sabbath and every day. Jesus' actions on the Sabbath reveal that while the law is important, Maintaining right relationship with God involves caring for our neighbors. Jesus heals and harvests on the Sabbath because inaction in the face of human suffering is not an option. We are not free to completely ignore Sabbath law. But because Jesus is our Lord of the Sabbath, we follow his lead. We will not hide behind laws for holy living in the face of human need but rather seek to be in right relationship with God through following Jesus' example. Let us pray. Living God who gives Sabbath rest, may we catch the breath of your spirit in our lives. Fill us afresh, refresh and restore us, O God. Enable and empower us, lead us and guide us that in all we do and say, we may bring praise to you. We have come to this church to worship and praise you today. Help us to not put the human created rules and rituals of the church before the needs of our neighbors. Jesus, help us to keep our eyes on you, to see your purposes. Keep our feet ready and free to follow you in your sometimes strange pathways. Keep our hands ready to serve and our hearts open to your call. Holy Spirit, help us to understand God's rhythm of work and service and rest and restoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.